While we can't stop every landslide, there are many ways we can reduce the risk and minimize the damage. These strategies fall into a few main categories, starting with engineering solutions. These are physical structures designed to hold back the earth or divert its path. You've probably seen some of them without even realizing it. Retaining walls are commonly built at the base of slopes, especially along roads and railways, to provide support and prevent the ground from slumping. For rockfall-prone areas, steel mesh netting or catch fences are installed on cliffs to stop falling rocks from reaching the area below. It's a direct brute force approach to controlling a specific threat. For larger scale problems, more heavy duty engineering is required. In areas prone to debris flows, strong concrete barriers or check dams can be built across a gully or channel. These structures don't necessarily stop the flow, but they slow it down and trap some of the larger, more destructive boulders, reducing the energy of the flow before it reaches a populated area. Another technique is improving drainage. By installing a system of pipes and channels on a hillside, we can safely collect and divert excess rainwater away from unstable areas, preventing the soil from becoming saturated. This tackles the root cause of many water-induced slides, but we don't always have to rely on concrete and steel. Ecological solutions which work with nature instead of against it are incredibly effective. The most important of these is reforestation, or bioengineering. Planting native trees, shrubs and grasses on bare slopes is one of the best long-term strategies. As we discussed, the root systems create a natural net that binds the soil, making it much more resistant to erosion and failure. This approach is not only effective but also helps restore the local ecosystem, improve biodiversity and combat climate change. It's a win-win solution that provides a living, self-repairing defense against landslides. Finally, good planning and policy are perhaps the most powerful tools of all. This is about making smart decisions about where and how we live. Using the hazard maps we talked about, local governments can implement zoning laws that restrict or prohibit construction in high-risk areas. It's far safer and cheaper to avoid building in a dangerous place than to try and protect a building once it's there. Building codes can also be strengthened to require specific foundation designs or slope stabilization measures for any construction that does happen in moderate risk zones. Awareness campaigns and public education are also vital, ensuring that residents understand the risks and know what to do in an emergency.